you can tell I'm old media. I've got a tie on. Uh, John says they're about to get to a thousand days. I worked out as quickly as I could. The Mercury's been around for about 46,000 days, I think. <laughs> Maybe just heading for 47,000. Um, but uh, things are changing, and I guess some of you here are uh, journalism students. And the question for me about community news and community media is why? You know, what's it for? What's the point? Uh, I don't have any doubt that, that community media has a role to play both now and going forward. Um, I actually don't have any doubt that community media has existed for a very long time. Um, parish magazines that come through your door written by a local church, uh, newsletters get stuck on walls. There's always been community media. What you've had is an explosion in the amount of uh, community media because of the internet because it's so easy now to do it. And, and my guess is there are already tens of thousands of community media outlets in Leicester alone. Um, you know, they can be anything from a blog uh, where somebody's writing about themselves or anything else through things like Twitter, microblogging, um, through to all sorts of other websites. Uh, and the big question for me all the time is, where does content belong? Where does news belong? When you hear the guys talking here, and a lot of the news agencies that, that Citizens Eye runs, they're what I would describe as vested interest. You know, the, the, the people creating the news have got a vested interest in creating that news. Now, for the, libraries, for the library services, that's a good thing. What you're trying to get is information out of people who want to tell you about something specific. Um, but I'd also say that there's a, another end to news, which is the news that not necessarily somebody wants to tell you about, it's the news that is the news, it's the questioning news. Um, somebody once very famously said that uh, news is anything that somebody doesn't want you to print, mm. anything else is an advert. Mm. Um, and, 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 and understanding where stuff fits in the, in the media outlets in a city, I think is one of the key things. John and I talk about this a lot. It's, it, for me, you, you start off, I was doing a funnel uh, shape in my mind. You start across the top where there are literally, literally, I think, tens of thousands of tiny little things, blogs, Twitter, etc., all that sort of stuff, even Facebook pages and, and stuff where people are just talking to a few of their friends. But there's a massive amount of information up there. An awful lot of it is only actually relevant to a very small number of people. So, for example, if I coach a women's football team, we've got our own website. Who should be looking at that website? Well, I tell you, we only really want 15 or 16 people looking at it, and they're the players. Because the information on there is, who are we playing this week? What time have you got to be there? What kit you should be wearing? That's not of information that's interesting to anybody else. At least we hope it's not. And so, and so it belongs in one place. So you've got these tens of thousands sitting up there, and then you move down a, down a notch and you get to something like Citizen's Eye, although well, I think, again, there are other things out there, but Citizen's Eye, which starts to say, well, there are all these tens of thousands, they've all got little bits of information on it, lots of which is only interesting to a very few people, but some of which wants a slightly wider audience. And that might be because the vested interest wants it to have a wider audience, or it might be because it has a general interest. And so you edit it down a bit, and you say, okay, we're putting this on there. And if you move further down the funnel, you get something like this is Leicestershire, which is the website of the Leicester Mercury. It's much more heavily edited. It's got far fewer people writing for it. Tens of thousands up here, a number of them coming down here. Down to this is Leicestershire, far fewer. Get down to the Leicester Mercury, it's really tightly edited. And it's got very few people writing it who are basically professional journalists. The thing that I always think is really interesting about that is that that funnel comes down this way, but it goes up the other way if you're looking at how many people read something. So if you start at the top, each one of those tiny little things may have five people reading it, it may have 50 people, it may even have 100 people reading it. If you move down to Citizen's Eye, you know, you might get 1,000, you might get 5,000, you're going to get a few thousand reading it. If you get down to This Is Leicestershire, on a typical day it has 30,000 reading it. And if you get down to the Leicester Mercury, it's got 200,000 reading it. And so there's a sort of there's, there's something there that says that when you're looking for lots of people to see something, it needs to be edited and considered what it is you're putting out there. And so the trick, I think, is to look at all the content that's out there and say, where does it belong in the pyramid? Where does it belong 
uh, in terms of who's going to read it. Who do you want to read this? And if you get it wrong, if we fill the Mercury, for example, with stuff which is actually only of interest to very few people, what will happen is very quickly, you won't have 200,000 people in the Mercury, you'll have two. Um, and, 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 and the opposite happens, that if you've got something that's really important, really interesting, and you stick it on my blog, <laughs> 10 people read it. And it really doesn't get, the, the information doesn't get out there. So that whole understanding where content belongs mm -hmm. is really important mm -hmm. to me. And then the second bit is, because I know that a lot of the content out there, a lot of the information out there has a vested interest behind it, that has a place, it belongs, you know, it's not, it's, I'm not saying there's no value in that, it's got a very specific value. Then there's something that you get right down to here where we've got 60 journalists sitting in the Mercury who can report and produce a certain amount of news. There's something in the middle, which is where I struggle to see how we're covering that. And part of the conversation John and I keep having about the 2012 by 2012 is how do we take some of them and train them so that they're good enough to produce content that has a much wider readership it might, it might be the Leicester Mercury, it might not be, it might be other bits in between, and there are lots of different things in between. But there are lots of things out there that we can't get to to cover. The people at the very top are not covering either, because they're telling to write about something they're interested in. But who turns up at the ward meeting? Now, you know, John and Simon are going to sit their hands up now and say, well, we do, because they do. But that's part of what we've been discussing that says, how do you get, it's not just about the vested interest, not just what you're interested in, it's also not just about the bit that we do, which is that we think this is big and interesting. There's a load of stuff in the middle. And that's the area we're looking at. And, and I think to do that, though, you have to train. And so the conversations we're having about the partnership with DMU is can we actually find a way of training community reporters to be more than just vested interest reporters so that you get all the layers? Um, and that's my hope, is that over the next, certainly the next 12 months, that's what happens, that we get ourselves to a stage where we can cover all the areas. So you start at the very top and we're, we know what's going on in each area and which bit of content needs to be where. And there'll be lots of arguments about that. The people with invested interest will have something that says, actually, I know you think it's only interest 15 people, but well, we need publicity for a reason. That's what we do. People come to us already and say, you might think this is fairly small, but actually it's really important and we want lots of people to hear about it. And I think there'll be a huge amount of discussions, and it'll be really interesting to see how that develops over the next few years. Yep. Okay.